going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be playing with open face bezels. Got to find different projects to use my leftover resin with, and I think this one will be fun. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence, and I have some open face bezels, and they are pretty much what they say they are. Uh, a bezel is usually used to encase a stone or an item within jewelry that cannot be soldered down. So usually with jewelry making, you'll find uh, the walls will be super, super thin, and they can be clamped over very carefully with a, a type of burnishing tool or something like that. But in this case with resin, uh, the resin will adhere to the size sides of the bezel in here and there's no clamping. The walls are a lot thicker, but what you do to get this set up is a little bit different than normal as far as jewelry making. So that's what we're gonna go through today. I'm gonna to get several of these lined up and have them ready to go for whenever I have leftover resin. And I'm planning on doing uh, quite a bit of pouring today, so I have a feeling I might use these guys. So let's get started here. So I've got a bunch of different shapes. I got um, a pack of these guys, so I've got some rectangles, with almost like triangular ones, some teardrop shapes. And what I do want to show you is this, is the, the loop on these goes side to side. And why I want to draw that attention to you is we're going to be um, placing these guys on a type of adhesive tape. And we don't want it to interfere with this loop at all. So if you do have some where the loop is going in this direction, this like that, you need to be mindful of that and find a way to attach your tape so that it doesn't interfere with that and it, and it has a complete seal. So that's what we're going to be doing first is, is sealing these guys up on tape. So this particular kit, kit came with some tape already and I'll put a link to this kit down in the description. So I'm going to get just a bit here and I've got um, just a canvas that I had left over that has a saran wrap still on it just just to make it easy and also for you guys to be able to see this well i'm not worried about this little starter bit at all to be honest with you maybe i should be okay so what we're trying to do is keep it open that you pour the resin into this area but attach one side of it to the tape and i'm going to put these guys fairly close and the reason for that is just using up the space. And also sometimes when you're pouring resin, it's tricky. Well, that didn't work out well. <laughs> Let's see if I can pick this up. Okay, but you get an idea really quickly how well it grips. Okay, and I am also trying to reach over. I'm gonna zoom you guys in actually. Zoom. Gotta do the sound effects. All right, let me try this again. All right this it'll work with my hands a little better All right. now what I could do is put just a bunch of rectangles around but what I'm also trying to do is get the metal somewhat close by so I do a lot of dirty pours and let's pretend this is my cup here so if I'm pouring into this little piece here it's going to be hard for me to, to bounce and not dribble a bunch on the side. And I don't want to do it on, dribble it on the outside of it. So I want to get these guys kind of close. So this hopefully will allow me a chance to tip it up and then pour some more into this guy here. Or I could use a, a, a spoon or something like that. So let me... Nope. that guy down okay. 
I used to make jewelry a long time ago. I love, love, love working with it. I did um, a lot of work with silver. That was my go-to thing that was, always made me smile. Everybody has their personal preference of whether or not they like gold or silver. And Well, mine was silver. Silver and amethyst. But that probably doesn't come as a surprise to anybody. So I'm just testing this part out. And it does feel like the adhesive's on completely on that little starter strip. So what I'm going to do here is just lay a couple of these guys down side by side. Let's see. next to each other. Look at that. Probably a set of tweezers might help you out as far as being able to lay them down. Just make sure that you're not gripping those tweezers super hard together because they will make marks on your metal here. And then all I'm doing down is pushing them really good down on top of the tape to make sure it's got a real good seal and then what I can do is I could simply put uh, maybe even a piece of wax paper or something like that over top of these something that this one would want to adhere to like parchment paper would probably want to adhere to I can't get any tape to adhere to parchment paper so that's a perk so I could literally lay a sheet of parchment paper over top of these for when I'm ready to use it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get several sets of small ones like this and have them ready to go. So I'm gonna work on that right now. That's the hardest part is just get some let go. I'm gonna do these side by side too. See how that works. I have seen this technique also used with um, shipping tape. I don't know the results as far as like what particular tape works the best and what doesn't. This feels very similar to that. <laughs> Clearly, very sticky. All right. Let's see. I like these guys also, the ones I picked out because they felt or they look like they were really thick and it didn't feel very, it didn't seem like they were going to be flimsy. And I also like the fact of being able to uh, loop little links to metal links immediately and not have to worry about either drilling a hole through your resin or even having that initial loop, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, sometimes you'll have a resin mold that'll have a little loop in there, so you have to loop your ring through a resin loop. And that to me feels like it could be fragile, but just the in first initial link being metal, that seems smarter to me. I don't know, maybe you've had better, better luck with that. Let me know. <laughs> Okay, I also got a different variation here as well. I've got some triangles. And if you ever know me back in high school, I always did a whole bunch of stuff in triangles. Still kind of gravitate towards that kind of design. I don't know, it ends up in my stuff a lot. And it's not intentional, it just kind of happens. 
Um, this is also another teardrop. I think this is a different company, but it's a fairly similar design. But if you notice, let me pull this guy up a little closer. And this may be a matter of personal preference. But see the wall on that one? Seems a lot thicker than this one does. So, you know, again, personal choice on what you like to do. Let's see. Also, this one here, and this is, uh, I can show you a little bit about what I was talking about. So, remember the loop what I was telling you about when you can see it? And the loop goes this direction. That sometimes the loop might be de deeper. So this could interfere a little bit with my tape. So I have to be very mindful of that. Looks like it's close. Let's see. Let me zoom in here. Also using the camera to kind of help me out to figure out. I don't know. It may or may not interfere with the tape. This side looks a little closer, meaning on this side than it does on this side. This side looks like it could bump over. But you see what I'm talking about, where it could interfere, and if you get a little bit of a gap, that resin finds that gap and it'll seep out this way. So we don't want that. All right, I'm gonna put these guys to the side and have something covering them just to keep the dust out of the tape. Um, you could, if you wanted to, either put little items down on the tape, like um, if you want little seashells, you could do that. I already have them in place. Or I would probably recommend putting your resin down and then very gently putting your little seashells in place or whatever your item bits are. And that way they can go into the resin. And it might help out with bubbles, but you got to keep it. Be careful of that. Another thing with, uh, and I just use an example of seashells because uh, you can get them super tiny and they've got air pockets in them. If it were me, I would probably put them in like a little container with some resin already, kind of mix it up a little bit, very gently. So that way the resin has a chance to get into maybe some of the crevices and the little hole pocket, you know, the air pockets and stuff. And then pick that up very carefully and place that in. Now, if you've already got color in here, that might be tricky to do. So just carefully place in your uh, your little seashell or even, you know, people sometimes will put in little deposits of um, ashes and stuff and you could probably mix that into a little solution and pour that in as well. So, yeah, okay. Now I gotta go play with some resin so I have some leftovers to play with these. Until then, later. All right, I got a few sheets ready to go whenever I need them. I'm gonna cut a little piece of parchment to place over this, and I'll have this on a tray that I can pull out at any time and add to them as I go along. For this video, um, I'll pour a couple and take them off the tape so that you can see what they look like. But for the most, most of the time, probably what I'm gonna do is have these guys in the tray fill them up and just not take them off the tape until I'm completely done. And the cool thing about this is like, if you've ever used resin in a mold before, let's say you have a circle mold like this. What resin will do is when you pour it into the top and as it cures, it kind of attaches itself to the sides a little bit. So when it comes out of the mold, you'll find there's like a little thin, thin, thin edge and that edge can be kind of sharp and it's something you feel like you need to sand down. In this case here, I don't have to go all the way to the top of the mold. And if I do, what will happen is it will probably dome. In other words, it'll kind of have this shape where it's doming over the top. Or if it's just under that level line, it'll just, it might creep up the side, but it's just gonna stop where the top of the metal is. So I won't probably need to do any sanding. But what I will do is just before I, let's just say I'm done with my project right now, I'm about to pour, I will probably give these things just a quickie press down to make sure it's all sealed before I go and pour into any of these little cavities. 
So I, I will do some of that um, on camera, but I'm not going to fill up this whole thing because, you know, that's a lot of leftover resin. So I'm hoping just to use this in a little bit. So that way, you know, I don't have like 20 pieces. I'm, I haven't counted these. You know, 20 pieces of uh, jewelry that are all the same color. I'm hoping to have, you know, like maybe three or four of these from one project, three or four of these from another project. So there's a variety and that would be kind of nice. So anyway, so I will put these guys away and wait for their moment. All right, I got some leftover resin. And it's time to pour a few pieces here. What I have is one of these little paper cups and I will pinch the end of it so I get a little bit more of a point and it gives me some control. But what I've poured in here is some the leftover bits. So I very carefully pour it in here. And let it run how it will. I've got a skewer that I can uh, bring in and encourage it to go to the edges. Just pouring it ever so slowly, so that way getting a lot of black and not a lot of color. Let's see if I can get some more color in there. Got a little bit left of the color that I could put in. A tiny bit of gold. Right. Let's see if that helps. A little bit more color there. See if I can scooch this down carefully. Oops. Oop. Pull back quickly so I can get it to the right level. Of course, you can't see what I'm doing here. So I've got a, a little bamboo skewer. I'm gonna try and encourage it to go to in there, all my corners, and then maybe go in and swirl the color out a little bit. Looks like that one is pretty much set. So I'm gonna come in through the color just swirl a little bit, mainly because it's so black. I want it to have a little bit of a design. This one looks like it's pretty much edge to edge. So yay. Bring out that blue. Ooh, that turned out cool. All right, this is nice. Breathing. Oh, wow. I'm gonna try that one more time. Oh, it's really full. All right. I'll let those cure. Let me bring you in closer. Oh, my, you weren't already pretty close. 
So that gold is going to come to the surface. Just left little bitty specks of color. But those Front are gate open. Oh, sorry about that. That would be uh, the hubby fetching some food for tonight. So this turned out pretty elegant. Yeah. So hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified. Next time I put a video up. Well, there you go.